Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today channel Dan Srayoun is going to present you about, how to set up a lesson plan. A lesson plan is the instructor's road map of what students need to learn and how it will be done effectively during the class time. Then, you can design appropriate learning activities and develop strategies to obtain feedback on student learning. Having a carefully constructed lesson plan for each 3-hour lesson allows you to enter the classroom with more confidence and maximizes your chance of having a meaningful learning experience with your students. A successful lesson plan addresses and integrates three key components, learning objectives, learning activities and assessment to check for student understanding. A lesson plan provides you with a general outline of your teaching goals, learning objectives, and means to accomplish them, and is by no means exhaustive. A productive lesson is not one in which everything goes exactly as planned, but one in which both students and instructor learn from each other. Hi everyone! Before class, steps for preparing a lesson plan. Listed below are 6 steps for preparing your lesson plan before your class. 1. Identify the learning objectives. Before you plan your lesson, you will first need to identify the learning objectives for the lesson. A learning objective describes what the learner will know or be able to do after the learning experience rather than what the learner will be exposed to during the instruction, i.e. topics. Typically, it is written in a language that is easily understood by students and clearly related to the program learning outcomes. The table below contains the characteristics of clear learning objectives. The Bloom's revised taxonomy of educational objectives is a useful resource for crafting learning objectives that are demonstrable and measurable. 2. Plan the specific learning activities. When planning learning activities you should consider the types of activities students will need to engage in, in order to develop the skills and knowledge required to demonstrate effective learning in the course. Learning activities should be directly related to the learning objectives of the course, and provide experiences that will enable students to engage in, practice, and gain feedback on specific progress towards those objectives. As you plan your learning activities, estimate how much time you will spend on each. Build in time for extended explanation or discussion, but also be prepared to move on quickly to different applications or problems, and to identify strategies that check for understanding. Some questions to think about as you design the learning activities you will use are, what will I do to explain the topic? What will I do to illustrate the topic in a different way? How can I engage students in the topic? What are some relevant real-life examples, analogies, or situations that can help students understand the topic? What will students need to do to help them understand the topic better? Many activities can be used to engage learners. The activity types i.e. what the student is doing and their examples provided below are by no means an exhaustive list, but will help you in thinking through how best to design and deliver high-impact learning experiences for your students in a typical lesson. It is important that each learning activity in the lesson must be 1. Aligned to the lesson's learning objectives, 2. Meaningfully engage students in active, constructive, authentic, in collaborative ways, and three, useful where the student is able to take what they have learned from engaging with the activity and use it in another context, or for another purpose. Three, plan to assess student understanding. Assessments e.g., tests, papers, problem sets, performances provide opportunities for students to demonstrate and practice the knowledge and skills articulated in the learning objectives, and for instructors to offer targeted feedback that can guide further learning. Planning for assessment allows you to find out whether your students are learning. It involves making decisions about the number and type of assessment tasks that will best enable students to demonstrate learning objectives for the lesson, examples of different assessments, formative and summative, the criteria and standards that will be used to make assessment judgments, rubrics, student roles in the assessment process, self-assessment and peer assessment. The weighting of individual assessment tasks and the method by which individual task judgments will be combined into a final grade for the course, information about how various tasks are to be weighted and combined into an overall grade must be provided to students. The provision of feedback, giving feedback to students on how to improve their learning, as well as giving feedback to instructors how to refine their teaching, to learn more about designing assessment. Plan to sequence the lesson in an engaging and meaningful manner. Robert Gagné proposed a nine-step process called the Events of Instruction, which is useful for planning the sequence of your lesson. Using Gagné's nine events in conjunction with Bloom's revised taxonomy of educational objectives aids in designing engaging and meaningful instruction. Gain attention. Obtain students' attention so that they will watch and listen while the instructor presents the learning content. Present a story or a problem to be solved. Utilize icebreaker activities, current news and events, case studies, YouTube videos, and so on. 
the objective is to quickly grab student attention and interest in the topic and utilize technologies such as clickers and surveys to ask leading questions prior to lecture, survey opinion, or gain a response to a controversial question. Inform learner of objectives. Allow students to organize their thoughts regarding what they are about to see, hear, or do. Include learning objectives in lecture slides, the syllabus, and in instructions for activities, projects and papers. Describe required performance, and describe criteria for standard performance. Stimulate recall of prior knowledge, help students make sense of new information by relating it to something they already know or something they have already experienced. Recall events from previous lecture, integrate results of activities into the current topic, and or relate previous information to the current topic and ask students about their understanding of previous concepts. Present new content. Utilize a variety of methods including lecture, readings, activities, projects, multimedia, and others. Sequence and chunk the information to avoid cognitive overload. Blend the information to aid in information recall. And Bloom's revised taxonomy can be used to help sequence the lesson by helping you chunk them into levels of difficulty. Provide guidance. Advise students of strategies to aid them in learning content and of resources available. With learning guidance, the rate of learning increases because students are less likely to lose time or become frustrated by basing performance on incorrect facts or poorly understood concepts. Provide instructional support as needed, as scaffolds cues, hints, prompts which can be removed after the student learns the task or content model varied learning strategies, mnemonics, concept mapping, role playing, Visualizing use examples and non-examples to find out more about scaffolding student learning, click here practice, allow students to apply knowledge and skills learned. Allow students to apply knowledge in group or individual activities. Ask deep learning questions, make reference to what students already know or have students collaborate with their peers. Ask students to recite, revisit, or reiterate information they have learned. And facilitate student elaborations, Ask students to elaborate or explain details and provide more complexity to their responses. Provide feedback. Provide immediate feedback of students' performance to assess and facilitate learning. Consider using group or class-level feedback, highlighting common errors, give examples or models of target performance, show students what you do not want. Consider implementing peer feedback, and require students to specify how they used feedback in subsequent works. Assess performance. To evaluate the effectiveness of the instructional events, test to see if the expected learning outcomes have been achieved. Performance should be based on previously stated objectives. Utilize a variety of assessment methods including exams, quizzes, written assignments, projects, and so on. Enhance retention and transfer. Allow students to apply information to personal contexts. This increases retention by personalizing information. Provide opportunities for students to relate coursework to their personal experiences and provide additional practice. 5. Create a realistic timeline. A list of 10 learning objectives is not realistic, so narrow down your list to the two or three key concepts, ideas, or skills you want students to learn in the lesson. Your list of prioritized learning objectives will help you make decisions on the spot and adjust your lesson plan as needed. Here are some strategies for creating a realistic timeline. Estimate how much time each of the activities will take, then plan some extra time for each. When you prepare your lesson plan, next to each activity indicate how much time you expect it will take. Plan a few minutes at the end of class to answer any remaining questions and to sum up key points. Plan an extra activity or discussion question in case you have time left. And be flexible, be ready to adjust your lesson plan to students' needs and focus on what seems to be more productive rather than sticking to your original plan. 6. Plan for a lesson closure. Lesson closure provides an opportunity to solidify student learning. Lesson closure is useful for both instructors and students. You can use closure to check for student understanding and inform subsequent instruction, adjust your teaching accordingly, emphasize key information, tie up loose ends, correct students' misunderstandings, preview upcoming topics. Your students will find your closure helpful for summarizing, reviewing, and demonstrating their understanding of major points consolidating and internalizing key information, linking lesson ideas to a conceptual framework and or previously learned knowledge, and transferring ideas to new situations. There are several ways in which you can put a closure to the lesson. State the main points yourself today we talked about, ask a student to help you summarize them, and ask all students to write down on a piece of paper what they think were the main points of the lesson. Hi everyone, 
during the class, presenting your lesson plan. Letting your students know what they will be learning and doing in class will help keep them more engaged and on track. Providing a meaningful organization of the class time can help students not only remember better, but also follow your presentation and understand the rationale behind the planned learning activities. You can share your lesson plan by writing a brief agenda on the whiteboard or telling students explicitly what they will be learning and doing in class. Hi everyone, after the class, reflecting on your lesson plan, take a few minutes after each class to reflect on what worked well and why, and what you could have done differently. Identifying successful and less successful organization of class time and activities would make it easier to adjust to the contingencies of the classroom. If needed, revise the lesson plan. Thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe, like and share to channel Dan Srayoun in order to get more videos. Thank you.